welcome to this episode of Retro Game Living Room. It's been a while since I put out a video and that's because I've been busy doing a thing. In recognition of that, today we're going to be taking a closer look at a game that requires the power of your brain. This is MindFlex, a toy that was released in the United States in 2009 by Mattel. It's a game that you control with your brain waves. This is the Sega Toys version. We'll be taking a closer look at it, so stick around. MindFlex isn't really a video game, but it is an electronic game. The game is the product of, a, of research and development by a company from Silicon Valley called NeuroSky. This version here that we're taking a look at today is the Sega Toys version. This was, also, this was released in Japan in 2010 but it was also released in the United States by Mattel, which licensed it to Sega Toys in order for them to make this game and market it in their home territory. All right, so we have some packaging here that's actually pretty nice and it beautifully contains the console and accessories. We fold it open. And there are two boxes which contain items that we're going to use in this game. Inside the main box, there are some instructions and the console itself. So here we have a look at the console. The console runs on batteries and it has a back panel which holds little foam balls so that they don't get lost, which I think is a neat thing to do. Inside the packaging, here we have bags of accessories to, fill, to build an obstacle course. And I also have more spare balls. Inside this box, we have the most important part of the MindFlex, which is the MindFlex headband. Before getting started, the first thing to do after putting batteries in is to set up these pieces here so that we can build ourselves an obstacle course. Because we're gonna be having a ball that's gonna fly through the air suspended by air pressure. And that ball We're going to move around the track of our obstacle course with nothing but my mind. So my mind is going to move a ball all around this game, this game console. Okay, so we have an obstacle course built on the console now. I put four C batteries in the console, and I put three AAA batteries in the MindFlex headset. So if you look at this thing, this reminds me a lot of the Atari MindLink controller that was never released in the mid 80s. So this has one sensor right here on your forehead. So I'm just gonna already size this up for my head size. and I got it fitted. Now it has two more dangly sensors that look like earpieces. Well, they're not earphones, but they are earpieces. They clamp to your earlobes. And I've got one of the balls, so it's time to go ahead and flex my mind and see if I can complete an obstacle course with my brain power. 
First thing you want to do is locate the power button on the side of the system and switch the console on. Select game. There's a couple game options that we can do. Freestyle. First one's freestyle, which lets you move the ball anywhere on the play field. Mental marathon. Mental marathon is one that allows you that basically it's just times you as you complete a loop so you can play one or two players or or up to four players and you switch the head the headset around to see who can complete the loop the fastest danger zone. in danger zone you're just concerned with getting from one lit up zone to another quicker than everyone chase else and chase the lights different lights will light up in different orders and you have to go to where the lights are displayed so for this example, we're going to do mental marathon. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, switch on my headset so it can sync to the system. I'll press, I'll press the, gray, the gray button to lock in the selection of my game. Selected one player with the white button. I'll press the gray button to lock that in. Headset is on, so I just hit the button again to tell it that the headset's on. Rotate fan to calibration point. Calibration point is right in the center. Begin. And now it tells me that it's ready for the game to start. My first goal is to get the ball over this little guy right here. These lights here display the power of the fan. So what I'm trying to do is increase the fan power so I can get the ball over the obstacle. Using only the power of my mind. You want to go to your home. It's over there. Yeah. Okay. That's not... It's going to cheat a little bit. Okay. So when the... I'm controlling the knob, the, the motion of the fan with my hand down here. And my mind's controlling the fan power, supposedly. And it fell off, so let's try again. When it falls off the course, which happens, I just put it back on to the point where it fell off and then keep going from there. What I want the ball to do is to go up through both the loops Then over the top. Which didn't quite happen, but I did get it through. So I've lit up another spot. Mm, so we lost it there. Let's try that spot again. Alright, so we want to go be able to go through this next obstacle. Nice slow start. I calm my mind. I don't, I don't want it on full blast. We didn't make it through. This is ironic that I'm filming this on the run. I practiced this a lot before I filmed this. So it's ironic that the run I'm filming on, I'm having the absolute worst luck. I haven't seen the ball fall off the course this many times ever. All right, mind control, go. <laughs> Get on that slide, teeter-totter. Go. 
goes. Now roll to the end. All right, here we go. Hey, that worked. This one I gotta be careful because if I'm not careful, I'll shoot it out of this pipe here. So I gotta get it to just rise up and come out through here to here. So I'm trying to use the least amount of brain power, even though I'm talking to you, it's not registering my brain power. Ooh, rise. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And with that, complete. I've completed the game. Player one, six minutes, 28 seconds. For you at home, that didn't take me six minutes and 28 seconds. So I already cut a lot of that out for you. So what to think about MindFlex? What do you think? Every time I see or hear of one of these mind reading products, I instantly think it's shitty. It reminds me of the Atari Mind Link, where it was supposed to be able to read your mind to control the screen, but really it was looking at like muscle movements in your eyebrows or your eyes or something like that, right? Well, according to the creator of this product, this actually does a very low grade electroencephalogram or EEG. And, you know, this company, what they do is they make products and they get, they get, you know, funding to make products that do EEGs for the consumer market. So right now they have a product out that shows brain patterns and can play video games on phone apps and stuff like that. So it may be a little bit more advanced than this one is to come out in 2009. I'm not sure really how to control it myself and actually it's on right now while I'm talking to you and it's just been kind of fluctuating up and down this whole time right now I'm thinking it to go higher go higher go higher go higher go higher yeah nothing I found earlier <laughs> I, was, I was testing it I thought if I shook my head up and down, it would make it go higher. And shaking my head left and right made it go lower. But that theory never panned out. It did work that one game, but it didn't work the rest of the games. This is a neat toy. It's, it, it's more of a toy than a game. It feels like more of an experiment than an actually thought out game with rules and an objective. Now, there is a sequel to this that's called Mindflex Duel, which is two players at one time. Another thing that's interesting to know is that people have bought MindFlex. People have bought MindFlexes and have modded them into for other uses in the games, including pro providing electric shocks. So there are uses out there, and you can buy these games up and mod them. It's a pretty cheap game, especially if you get the Mattel version. I'm a huge Sega fanboy, so I got. You know, the Sega Toys model imported from Japan. That was a little bit more expensive than I get, a ship, get one shipped from Japan. But the U.S. version are not rare. They're mass-produced. I even find incomplete ones at Goodwills on my Goodwill hunting trips semi-frequently. Uh, never with the... Never, never one with the headset, though. Never one with the headset. So if this is something that interests you, it's got a low barrier. Give it a shot. Uh, just know that it's not something that you're probably going to have a lot of fun with. I will see you next time.